This video is going to be over Agile and Agile backlogs um, for a claim trending project. I'm going to walk through the steps that you might use if you're going to create a trending process for um, your 837 claims, but it could also be used uh, in other applications as well. I'm going to use uh, a Lean Agile software. Um, you know, Lean Agile is going to use attributes uh, like it's going to have attributes of eliminating waste, uh, create knowledge, and deliver uh, products or services fast. And um, this uh, is a Lean a tool for Agile that will actually allow you to do just that without all the overhead for learning curves. So uh, I'm going to jump right in. Um, the first thing that you want to do when you're building uh, a trending process for your claims or for your other EDI projects is that you're going to want to build a parser. So you can see here uh, I've defined the epic as build the parser. And uh, for the story, the first part I have EDI reading logic. Now this involves, um, you know, first off, building a loop identification log logic. Uh, if you look at an 837 claim, there's going to be a 1000A loop, 1000B, uh, and then your 2010 loops for a 2010AA and 2010BA and 2010CA and 2300 and so forth. And if your application cannot find out uh, where those loops are, it will get lost and you won't have the quality data. You won't be pulling the correct data if you find it at all. So you have to know what that looping logic looks like. Also, I can do a deeper dive on some of those if you like. This is really an, uh, a business video to show how to build this project. If you folks uh, need more of a technical uh, uh, overview, let me know and I can do a deeper dive on any one of these tasks that I have listed here in this Lean Agile story uh, and, and backlog. So uh, the next um, task that I have here is build hierarchical and transaction uh, uh, intelligence. Like, for example, when you have an HL loop, it will tell you if it's the subscriber loop or if it's the dependent. And uh, this will also help you identify a uh, top of form if that's where uh, your transaction is looping at. With an A37, you can loop that transaction in several different ways. So uh, you know, part of building the parser means you need, you need to know when uh, to start and stop, you know, consuming a transaction. And the HL hierarchical loops are part of that. Uh, the next task that you have is uh, you need to account for uh, what your scope is as far as institutional, professional, and dental. Are, are you going to do all three? Or are you going to do just maybe professional? Uh, that's going to depend on your project. Now, when we move on to the next story, um, we define what variables will feed into the dashboard and the trending processes. And part of that, uh, and, and this task right here is really just... Um, kind of feeding in or leading from the first one to the reading logic, but this is actually uh, extracting, you know, like this first story is reading the data and this next story is kind of like extracting it, and that's exactly what this is. If you were given a segment, for example, an NM1 segment, and you want to extract a uh, last name out of it, you need to have a function that can read a segment, determine what the element separators are, and then given um, a directive like give me element number three, it needs to be able to pull out the element or composite that the user is looking for. So that logic needs to be built. The next task that I have here is to find any limitations for storing adjustments. Um, this is specific to, for example, uh, healthcare claims and, and remittances. Uh, there could be hundreds or thousands of adjustments per claim. Uh, most people don't st store that much. I would recommend, you know, at least probably about a dozen. I've seen some folks, some payers, stop at five, and, that, and there are six triplets in a, in a cash segment, and when that happens, it creates uh, a possibility for errors, and, and they will happen. So um, that is kind of like um, something that you'll need to decide. Most people won't consume all of the adjustments, but determine what your application is and how many adjustments you want to save. Usually most claims will only have a half a dozen adjustments or less, usually just two or three or one. You know, like uh, an adjustment could be like, uh, for example, uh, copay, uh, you know, or deductible or something like that. Okay, so uh, after you've defined, uh, you know, your adjustments and what you're going to store, uh, you need to define what type of data that you're going to store. Is it going to be raw data? Is it going to be uh, formatted or reformatted data? Uh, so you, there's actually like, you know, at least three different types, raw data, parsed data, and then formatted data. And there's actually more than that, but this will give you an idea. You need to determine what your application is. If it's more technical, then you'll probably need more of the raw data. If it's closer toward the user, then you're probably going to look at something that looks like formatted data, uh, or at least parsed data. Uh, the next task I have here is build EDI rules for how to handle missing data. Not just missing data, but how to handle data that exists that's not supposed to be there. Uh, we have all kinds of TR3 and HIPAA rules for defining these transactions, but um, there are many cases every, all across the country where folks will build non-compliant data, and you need to make sure that your application will not crash if it finds something it doesn't understand. Okay, the next story is define and build external code set references. Um, depending on your trending and your dashboard efforts, um, you're going to need probably some sort of uh, database uh, for CPTs, that's procedure codes, or ICD for diagnosis codes or modifier code sets. Um, also, you'll probably need um, some data for, uh, I would say, um, 
audit reports and the air reports that come out of there and your claim rejection codes, like out of um, a 277CA, for example. And, th and that is lightly covered here in this next task, build rejection codes uh, uh, and the databases that will store them. So that's the first uh, epic that we're looking at, building the parser. Read, read in the EDI, that's the first step. Extract the data, you know, and build the data sets or at least define them. This next epic goes over building the actual data and the storage and the, the type of data that you're going to store. Um, as part of this uh, agile process, um, I would say the first task is going to be to prepare some data. So I have here um, uh, some tasks for preparing 837 claim data, 835 remittance data, 277 CA data, um, and also uh, folder naming conventions. Um, when you're going to cover an epic like this with data storage, you need to know or you need to define, is this going to be cloud-based? Is this going to be uh, a data lake? Is it going to be a smart index lake? Uh, are, the, are the data going to be just maintained in files? Uh, we have a program called Silo Bay that works fantastic on folders that uh, we sold to Medicaid, for example. And uh, what it does is that it has a smart index lake, and it actually goes into um, behind the firewall, grabs the file, opens it up, and goes down to exactly where the claim's at and pulls it out. It's extremely efficient, uh, and you can actually get a lot accomplished that way. Uh, that's not the same. It actually uses both smart index lakes uh, and uh, indexing, you know, for referencing all the information. But however you build that, if it's a cloud-based, uh, you know, you need to define, you know, which side of the firewall your application is going to run on. And also know that there are limitations. A lot of providers are not going to let you take PHI and other sensitive data Data, you know, onto the internet and your cloud, you know, uh, especially, you know, with all the concerns there are over PHI and liability. So consider that when you're uh, working on this epic uh, of defining your data and your storage. Okay, the next part is really defining um, your trending. And this is where we get into uh, where you start working on your reports and your dashboards and, and what the, your users are going to want to see. In some applications, you'll be finding errors. In other applications, you'll be trying to figure out how you might fine tune a process to uh, make more money for a provider or help, uh, you know, if you're working for a payer, you might want to see, um, you know, where your uh, biggest issues are coming, you know, in EDI, for example, where are most of the uh, error messages and failures coming from. So um, define what variables, uh, what variables will feed your dashboard. Um, you know, consider best uh, practices. You know, maybe you might uh, look at, for example, a, a trending process or an audit process where uh, there's nothing wrong with the current process, but it could be done better. This is an opportunity for you to build something better than what the next person has. Um, uh, I've included another task here for a modifier uh, intelligence um, because, you know, this is something that from a provider's uh, point of view, uh, if you use this, two, a modifier is a two-digit um, piece of data and it's attached to a CPT code and it can really greatly change the way a claim is pay, paid. So um, I, I think this is going to be important, especially for the provider community. So you want to make sure that you can catch up to four modifiers. Uh, you can have up to four modifiers on one CPT code and you'll find those, you know, in the 2400 loop of the 837. Uh, the next task I have here is create data extraction apps uh, for trending reports. Um, this could be an ad hoc report or it could be a defined report, either one. Uh, when I move on to the next story, I have uh, maintenance and selections. This is where you're going to define uh, how to manage the data in your lake, when to remove data, uh, and also um, you know, how are you going to allow the um, queries to your data. Um, are, are you going to allow for custom selections uh, or you're going to have maybe a set of queries that you allow them to choose from. So that's pretty much an overview here of how to build uh, a trending dashboard for uh, a, you know for a claim process uh, housed in an, uh, a lean agile software. Um, I have also a another epic in here uh, that starts to touch on you know going over uh, cloud-based uh, software as a service calls, but I'm not going to go into that really too far because it's uh, it's really a little bit out of scope. But I just wanted you to know that you know as you build your epics and your stories, uh, there's going to be a final product and it could be cloud-based or it could be behind the firewall. Um, so I, I think that that will probably cover the details. Um, uh, this software is available if anybody's interested in it. Uh, we use it for short projects. Um, if uh, you have any questions, uh, you can just leave me a comment below. I hope this has helped out and thanks for watching my video.